all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back updates and information as it is hot in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment and share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop you will be the first one collect them let's go down to the news proper as it is hot you don't share for the obodo uh katakata don't do again because uh i know from camera uh and then my was uh as it be for today will be democracy day make a day bring you uh information this one a democracy day where it be say na inside nigeria uh, because me at the time my people some people here they sometimes they ask me uh, they say your couples uh, why do you like bringing uh, what is happening in Nigeria, this and that, that you are not supposed to be bringing it? Um, sometimes, I, they are my followers. I love them. I love you. I love you people. Without you, uh, this channel would not have been moving as fast as it is now. Uh, but what I'm trying, I will just do an explanation for you so that you will be able to understand. Uh, what I what you need to understand now is that the Biafra, the part of Biafra that uh, we are still looking at, has not yet come. The the flag have not been lifted in Nigeria. It's a walk, and it is going to take time. Like I always tell you that whatever that concerns freedom is what we do with patience. You have to have patience to be able to follow freedom. Now, this is where your people are still domiciled. For example, you are a Biafran, you are in America. But remember that you have people who are still in the Southeast, in the South South, and all the territories that of course you know according to prophecy, and, and according to prophecy, where the Biafrans are supposed to conquer, because it is a prophecy. That's a prophecy. But some people don't know about it. And if you watch this prophecy, you find out that it comes like a spirit upon each generation. After Odume Gojuku, even before Odume Gojuku came, the Igbos themselves have already known themselves. They have their tradition. When the amalgamation of the white man came, they were not happy about it, but because people who are able are already democratic in nature, they are, their system is already a democratic system. It's a system whereby you cannot take on your fellow neighbor because there are certain rules and regulations to checkmate what you are doing. And then, our elders then are truthful men, you know. They have a man that if you go to his house, you get a truth out of what you are saying. I don't know if you are getting the point. Now, when the white man came, he saw all these things. I found out that the only way to conquer these people is that divide words and rule. I'm going to make these people give power to, the, uh, to the, the most obedient ones that are to you, playing according to your rules, then leave the other one. But let's not go into that side. Even before then, our forefathers have had the prophecy of a land. That's why, now you are still here, I have to be bringing you information. Today is Democracy Day, June 12. And today, the chief legal representative for Mahazin Nandikan, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Alor Ejimako, boldly declared on Wednesday that Igbos are the main victims of democracy. Ejimako expressed his opinions about democracy on social media site as calling it a hollow system devoid of the essential tenets of equality before the law and the free speech, asserting that democracy is a fair without tolerance for free speech and equality of all below the law. The constitutional lawyer highlighted free speech crucial role in democracy in his article. Ejimako did not mind words in his assessment, asserting that Igbo people have borne the brunt of democracy deficiencies. He pointed to the alleged misuse of illegal processes 
suppressed individuals like Nam De Kano as evidence of the systematic injustice faced by the Igbo community. Ejimako challenged others to refute his claim, urging to prove me wrong. This statement comes in the wake of Ejimako's accusation against Yusuf Bisichi, Director General of the Department of State Service and the Nigerian government for disregarding court orders regarding Kano's case. Ejimako specifically highlighted the failure of the DSS to grant Kano access to his legal team in a secure and suitable environment as directed by the court. Nandi Kano, currently held in a DSS facility in Abuja, raised concerns about the in inadequacy of, of space to confer with his local representatives in preparation for his defense. Ejimako's notice to the court underscore the importance the importance of Odu's canon's right and ensuring fair treatment by legal standard. As tensions continue to seminar around Kano's case and broader issues of democracy and human rights in Nigeria, the Jamaica Booker stands shed light on the challenges faced by marginalized communities and the ongoing struggle for justice and equality within the democracy framework. Even if people that don't see us, they happen for that particular matter today. Um, another one, uh, Emmy, uh, don't they deny say they know attack uh, IPOB camp? Uh, and uh, Emmy, uh, they deny that one. But uh, you get one powerful thing uh, where we say it happened between the Enugu, uh, between uh, Imo State, uh, where. Uh, police clashed with government and um, the police people there uh, uh, lost their life. I remember that the trending pattern now is the fight for monarchy is happening in Kano, is also happening in Anambra state. Uh, uh, they say that they are vowed to recognize a side monarch. In Anambra, some community gathered and inside some Muna, you know. Emma, some of these things are conspiracy. They are conspiracy because power, uh, this thing called power is very intoxicating and absolute power corrupts. And sometimes in Africa, you find that the leaders want to have absolute power. They don't want to be under control. It's not that uh, other countries, the Westerns, don't use power. They use their power. But in using this power, they allow the law also to checkmate them. So, you find that if you are able to beat the law, if you are faster than the law, you get what you want. But uh, in, Niger in Africa, in Nigeria, they step on the law. They, they, they don't allow the law to exist. Which is making it unfair game. The, game that, the games that is being pl played in Africa is unfair. Because where the rich takes it all, and the poor cannot, can never, ever, ever have opportunity to come to the top. Because everything is all about money. And that's why the country is falling. No values. No values in the country anymore. That's why the country is falling. Everything is all about money. The, the president is there just for the money. The local government chairman is there just for the money. Uh, the... Everybody you see there, all for the money. Oh, just for the money. I'm being honest with you. That is why, uh, even in the house, in the house that you think that they are together, they are no more together. Look at look at what is happening in Kano between Sanusi and the other man. That's power tussle. This person wants to become the 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 Sanusi, the Emir. Of Sokoto of Kano, Emir of Kano. The other one wants to become the Emir of Kano. And now the Emir of Kano, which was known from time origin, is not is not a contest. Before before the Hausa people know who, who is the Emir, they are not contesting it. But now things have changed. Politics, everything now is all about power, politics, and the money. And you see that. The leaders in this end of the world does not care about what happens to the poor man. 
and not even about what happens to the poor man, the development of their community, their town, their government, their constituencies where they are supposed to develop, those places are not developed. I'm being honest with you. You see them on land cruisers, they come to some little little churches, uh, they give offering, maybe a reverend calls them in the church. Instead of the reverend telling them, look at what you are supposed to do for your people, uh, they give Reverend 500,000, say they are supporting bazaar. What is supporting bazaar? The road to the place they are doing the bazaar, the road is no good. It's not tight. There is no electricity. There is no industry. There is no transformer. These are the things that we are there to represent for the people. To make sure that these things, these social amenities are provided in that particular community. And you are there. What you do is that when you go to churches, you donate money. That's, that's not politics. That's not how to do it. When do not money my food? Alright, wonderful people. Um, I see the bee. Uh, you know, say, uh, that one has to take a while. Uh, I can hear the one down the person.